everyone, welcome back to the Experimental Aircraft Channel. I'm Brian Wallstrom. Today we are in DeLand, Florida, visiting with Aero Adventure. We'll be talking about the Aventura line of aircraft coming up next. All right, so today we're here again at Aero Adventure, talking with uh, Alex Rolinski, who's the uh, owner-operator here, and he's going to tell us a bit more about the uh, Aventura line of aircraft. So, Alex, how, how did you get started with the uh, the Aventura aircraft, and how long have you been in business so far? All right, great question, Brian. So, originally, I owned an Aventura single seater, and uh, fell in love with the airplane, uh, just uh, the ability of what it could do and where I could go, and just explore new things. And given my love for that, I wanted to visit the factory, got involved there. Uh, I talked with Bob, who was the original owner back from uh, between 2000 up to about 2011. He was interested in selling and parting with the company, um, given some of the, the production really wasn't going as planned. So I wanted to save it and because of knowing the aircraft and loving it as much as I did. I figured there's no way I could let this go. So um, basically purchased the company back in 2011 and ever since been building these beautiful aircraft and uh, haven't looked back. So this is our Aventura 2, um, however this is our S17 model so it has a little bit uh, more upgrades and things that are included in it, kind of a high performance package for the regular Aventura 2. Uh, airframe is very similar, it's been beefed up a little bit um, so that it conforms to the additional horsepower and torque that the Aero Momentum engine puts out. Uh, this engine is 117 horsepower base um, and can put somewhere out around 130 once it's actually going and broken in. So. Um, this aircraft is all built out of T6, uh, 6061 aircraft aluminum. It's anodized in and out, so very well protected. We also have a four ounce Dacron sailcloth, which is extremely strong. It's all pre-sewn, and the customer gets to choose their colors. And then it's heat shrunk and clear coated for UV protection. And that also prolongs the life of the sails themselves. So this has a fiberglass um, composite hull, as you see, it's infused. So this gives it a much stronger uh, layup and it is also very light so this gives us a little additional benefit than what they used to offer which was just hand laid fiberglass and it had quite a bit more weight to it. So this aircraft is built very strong and it's built very light so it has incredible performance numbers um, and that's really what the Aventura is all about is being able to get into the tightest areas and go in and visit places you wouldn't really think to go before and being able to go out and uh, just have a good time for not a lot of money. All right Alex yeah if you could tell me a little bit about the process of uh, building the airframe and kind of where you, where you start. Well, first, we've already discussed it's made of 66, 6061 T6. That is correct. It's anodized in and out All for anodized. maximum corrosion protection. Correct. And this is one of the major assemblies here, which is the, the fuselage or skeleton. So where would you start in this assembly in the build process? So um, yeah, Brian, as you said, this is the skeletal structure. Although it looks very simple, there is a, a order of operations to making this all work and come together. Uh, basically, when this is being assembled as a kit or by us, we'd start with the bulkhead. This is our main component. This is where everything is triangulated against. And as you can see, the forward comes out from this, everything goes up from this, and then it also goes back from this and down. So this is our center, cent, central focal point, if you will, for when we're building the aircraft. Um, this has a lot of moving, well, I shouldn't say a lot of moving parts, but some moving parts. Uh, unlike some of the rest of it that's just rigid and bolted in, it doesn't move anymore. Because this incorporates your retract mechanism, um, it whether it be electric or manual, and also guides for the tail wheel to come down and connect to that. And uh, so there's things that move in this and it needs to be done correctly and then put together first so that everything else can be built off of that. Okay, so this is your foundation right here in the middle. Yes, sir. All right, and from there, it's easy to, to move back along with yep. the tube? Yep, so if you have your boom tube, you would just install that, bolts on here. You have your plates that come across for your down tube for your root tube and then as well as any structural board that then triangulate off of the bulkhead. Uh, one thing I will point out obviously we don't have the down tubes that come from the bottom because there are additional tubes there however to give you an idea everything here is triangulated which is a very very strong structure is what it ends up becoming. So as you see this is triangulated out to the boom tube, triangulated up to the root tube and then triangulated back to the root tube and then back down to the boom tube. So everything in here is built to withstand uh, and just based on loading data on the wings alone, it's 3.8 Gs, but this is built to withstand a lot of power, a lot of thrust, and a lot of performance is what you get out of this without having any type of airframe compromising. All right, and currently the horsepower options kind of range from what on this airframe? Uh, we can go as low as 80 horsepower, um, all the way up to the 117 or even the 147 horsepower aero momentum. 
it, tell me just a little bit about the the construction process. And I understand that this is more or less a 250 to 300 hour build time, which is probably like one of the the shortest build times in the industry. Sure. Uh, how is that accomplished? What methods do you, do you use to assemble this? That's a great question. So one of the advantages for the customer um, is that all of these parts are pre-cut, pre-bent, and pre-drilled by us here at the factory. Um, that gives you a huge advantage because really then it goes together like an erector set. So you're following a set of plans, or in this case our assembly manual, and putting bolts and holes and appropriate torques. And that's really all you're having to do. So the assembly goes pretty quick once you have all your components laid out and you can identify what parts are what uh, to be able to put that together. So that saves you a lot of time. So this is literally bolt together with AN hardware mostly. Is there any riveting or where? There is some riveting, like in this case, this is set up for a 912. Um, this root tube is built for that kind of engine, which like here is our bracket to be able to sustain the uh, radiator as well as the oil can. And then on the other side, some of the electronic components. So this has a block that raises it up to be able to access the bottom of the oil can and put the radiator in clean air. So this is riveted on a uh, small example there. There's a few other rivets back here. These are steel rivets that go into your plates that go into the boom tube. Um, and then the rest is all, obviously AN grade. Everything here will conform to ASTM standards um, and that is a really pride point for us. We want to conform to make sure that there is a standardization option and this aircraft is built very, very well. And all the rivets that are required, uh, this is no, this is not the typical of like a AN solid rivet. This is mostly pop rivet in the areas that you do need rivets? Correct. This is actually all pop rivet. So all we do not rivet, use yeah. any um, bucked rivets as they call it. Okay. No need for it. There's really no sheet metal application here that it will be going on so everything is pretty much bolted on for the most part and as you mentioned you you've already cut to length and bent all these tubes. you see this complex curves and so forth so as the builder is concerned uh most of that's done for but there is some drilling required but, but very minimal to be able to line things up and so forth um sure and that would like you said it's pretty minimal for the most part all, all of the drilling has already occurred um, if it needs to just be a little bit for lining up and purposes like that, then maybe. But um, for the most part, all you're doing is bolting on bolts, torquing them appropriately, lining up holes, and then, of course, putting in a few rivets here and there. Okay, so after this assembly here, the skeleton, once you've got, once you've got this assembly here, the, the skeleton built, what would be the next step in the process of building this kit? The next step is we will transition over to the hull. The hull is where we place the build pumps, uh, we place the fuel tanks, uh, have everything kind of lined up in the stringers, and then we would drop this airframe into the hull and mate it, as we call it. And I see you've got one kind of underway over here right next to us. Sure, so if we want to walk over here. Over here we have a hole that's already been mated to the skeleton frame. Correct. So this is with the turtle deck off, which is that fiberglass portion that goes on the back to cover up most of this and aesthetically appealing. Um, however, as you can see down here, there's a lot going on. Um, in this case, but this is where once the airframe is completed, you would mate it into the hull. The fuel tank's already placed in there, um, so that because the airframe goes over that. Now this has a 23 gallon fuel capacity in here, which is pretty common now for our, our latest, latest models. Um, everything then is built off of that airframe to be able to do wiring, engine, installation, everything else, and then we run the wires forward to the bulkhead where it's all connected to the battery and then being able to um, obviously run and, and fly eventually. So where, so where does the hull actually attach to the skeleton frame on this? So there's three major bulkhead connection po attachment points, um, as I call them. So right here we have stringers that run across the main, underneath the bulkhead, the main section, and that's bolted at four different locations across. And then up front, it's bolted through the hull, and this is the only part that protrudes through the hull is up here, where it's bolted to the fr airframe over there. And then in the very back right here, there's the last bulkhead where it's uh, for the down tubes, in this case for the boom tube, where it's bolted through, as you can see there. And then we have a small strap that just aids in taking off some of the, alleviate any additional stresses that may be placed by those tubes right here that goes over the boom tube and kind of seals it together. The skeleton structure is the structural part of this, um, and the fuselage, I'm sorry, the hull itself is actually more for flotation, so. Correct. The hull is uh, strictly for buoyancy. Um, it does add some rigidity and structure to it overall. However, the airframe is independently structurally sound. In other words, you could fly this aircraft without the hull and it would still be able to carry the same loading data that we have obviously tested with. So um, if you want to land in water, you will need this though. <laughs> so there's three sections to the hull? There is. So you have your lower section, which is your, your hull itself, which is what lands on water and, and your buoyancy. 
Then you have a, what's called a turtle deck, which comes over and covers this whole aft section. Um, it's both aesthetically appealing as well as semi-aerodynamic. And then you have the nose, which is your panel itself, which is what you would end up installing all of your gauges and whatever layout you went with. And your nose hatch that's incorporated there to be able to cover up the front portion. Uh, that is put on after so you could build your panel on the bench, have it all wired, um, and be able to test anything that you want to test before you actually place it on the aircraft. So it makes it a little easier for you. So as this is being a kit, uh, what exactly are you including in the kit? What do you get for the, the complete kit? Well, there's quite a few options, obviously, that the customer can select from. Now, with the basic airframe kit, it includes everything you need to assemble an airplane. Um, and then you have your option of engines. So there's a few different options there. And the engine mount will dictate that. And, of course, some of the structural components will dictate that as well. But you will have enough to build the entire airplane. And then once you, supply, once you choose an engine, we supply you with, you with what you need to be able to mount that engine and of course connect it up and, and run it. Um, and then option wise, whatever you choose for the panel is what would be included in that. So the airframe kit consists of everything you see here we, we've covered and the skeleton build, the metal work, the hull, the fiberglass, the instrument panel, which is also fiberglass. Correct. Uh, you get the landing gear, wheels, tires, and brakes. The, the brakes are a drum brake as a uh, base. So so the standard Aventura 2 kit, yes, they come standard with the uh, drum brake and wheel, which you can see right over here on that aircraft. Um, and that works great for, you know, minimalistic approach to this. Um, if you wanted to go all the way up, like I said, the S17 includes standard as Behringer wheels and brakes, so you could go real fancy. We have everything from the low end to the high end. And this um, kit is a little bit unique where you also get an interior, and I'll get another shot of this later, you get the interior as well. Correct. Which you can you can paint the interior whatever color you want but the interior consists of basically that and the seats which are uh what material are the seats again the seats are a uh, 3m waterproof uh, and also flame retardant type of fabric um, i'm not the sewing person but then they're all constructed of, with foam as well in there for comfort and okay. it's a sling style so they are adjustable up and down as you can see here they can be adjusted by the straps and then forward and back be another set of straps right there that can be adjusted accordingly for the pilot. You get the uh, instrument panel and then you have to cut out the holes and so forth to add whatever instruments that you prefer. Correct. So based on the option list, whatever they select as instrumentation, uh, the panel could be customized for really anything. It's a blank canvas. And uh, the gear is also a, a manual retract system for the gear as a base option with an option to go full electric on that. Correct. We do offer both. Uh, a lot of our customers actually prefer manual. However, we have manual and or electric. And as you mentioned, the other standard here is the... Electric flaps, yep. That's electric flap actuator right there, okay. All right, so again, uh, full full airframe kit, uh, skeleton, hull, interior. And what's unique about this aircraft is that uh, you don't necessarily have to paint it because it already comes with a gel coat, as you see it here. Mm -hmm. And you've got several different designs for the uh, sailcloth, which is, tell me about the sailcloth. So the sailcloth is a full round Stacron sailcloth. It's all pre-sewn. Customer would select their colors. Um, it can become in a, in a solid color as well if they choose to paint it. Um, so it's a very uh, versatile type of fabric where it's all pre-sewn. You put it on just like a sock and then it's heat shrunk so that it gives it that nice taunt aesthetic look. And then you can clear coat it for UV protection and or paint it if you want to decide to go that route. Tell me just uh, a little bit about the engine options that you have for the Aventura. Sure. Um, obviously, we offer the mainstay, which is the Rotax. We can go 80 horsepower, 100 horsepower there. Um, you can go all the way up to the 915 IS if you want. However, that's not a standard option just because of pricing. Um, we also offer the Air Momentum, more high-performance uh, versions, if you will, of the Aventura 2 because of how much thrust that we get out of this and torque so it's a, it's a little heavier engine but the power to weight ratio is phenomenal and we get a lot of thrust which really helps us when it comes to taking off off the water and breaking that suction so this is a very high performance machine in comparison and it's also a very uh, economical cost for when you talk about what you want in terms of an aircraft and engine kit you don't end up paying too much now in this configuration what kind of performance have you seen uh, in the two different types of engines from Rotax to I've, uh, to the uh, Aero Momentum engine. Sure, so um, this engine actually, we're pushing, like I said, 117 horsepower. We've seen them dyno, you know, uh, upwards of 130 horsepower once they're broken in. Um, in this aircraft specifically, I'm able to get off the water in six seconds, and uh, usually right around 200 feet. So 
it's quite incredible when it comes to you know being able to get in and out of tight spaces and not only that but i can i can climb out at 900 feet per minute while accelerating so i can clear a 50 foot obstacle with no issue within that distance well you've got actually three options for engines now correct we do um this is the honda viking uh which is their new 130 horsepower model we are eager to test this we have not done that yet uh we did used to offer the 110 uh, but, but that's obviously since been discontinued and we've had great success with the air momentum in that uh, meantime. So now we were able to uh, work with Jan over at Viking and, and get one of these to be able to test out on the Aventura 2. Uh, as I mentioned before, being the airframe is so versatile, it can accommodate pretty much any engine option. However, these are the ones we've tested and found to be proven. So this one I'm actually eager to test and see what that comparative numbers are. The air momentum, the Viking, and then this is the Rotax. Correct, yep, this is uh, one of our Rotax models. As you can see here, they're very accommodating for any engine, uh, but this is a 100 horsepower model. We offer the 80 as well for people that want a little bit less, uh, a little more docile or save a little bit of money on the Rotax pricing. So, um, but yeah, we can accommodate, like I mentioned before, all the way up to a 915 IS, but this is a standard Rotax block that you can see mounted on here. You mentioned earlier how you got into this business and acquired that and so forth. Uh, I'm curious for how you personally got into aviation. What's your, what's your background? Sure, um, so I've loved aviation my whole life. My father was a pilot. My mother actually was a pilot. Uh, my dad owned the 150 since I was born. I used to go up as a little kid and fall asleep as a baby. Um, so I've been around aviation for a very long time. In high school, I started my uh, PPL over in uh, Nogales, Arizona, flying around 172s. So uh, I've been been involved in that. Once I got out of high school, I went into the military. So I got uh, I was a flight engineer on a CH-47. Then all the two combat rotations, and uh, five and a half years later, and over 530 combat hours flying around in a Chinook, I uh, got out and decided to pursue my AMP. Obviously, having a mechanical background and inclination. So this is in fact a veteran-owned company. It is, yes, this is a veteran-owned company. So uh, I got my AMP license so I could do a lot of the stuff that I used to do in the military and the civilian world. Uh, it's worked out very nice. And then I was actually in finance for a while because of my college degree was had a background in finance and uh, all my electors were in finance. So I worked for a, one of the largest financial institutions, um, did management and uh, liked it, but uh, didn't, didn't have the same passion that I do for aviation and coming back into this world. So. I uh, did after eight years, got out of that, and here I am building airplanes. Awesome, awesome. So, so what is in the works here at Aero Adventure for future expansion or growth or, or whatnot? Uh, great question, Brian. There's quite a bit actually. Um, one of the exciting parts is we are actually expanding uh, from this smaller hangar, as you can see here, to a double the size hangar um, on the other side of the field. So we're looking forward to being part of the light sport village here at the land and uh, being able to ramp up production there, having a much larger facility, being able to do more volume and accommodate some of our R&D projects that we're really looking forward to. We'll keep some of those on the DL just for now, but uh, they are exciting and coming soon. We have uh, obviously expanded from a dealership standpoint, so we're looking forward to our dealer in Australia. We have also partnered with Sport Flying USA here in the US for our domestic sales. Um, and so we're just looking forward to 2019 and what that brings and then going forward. Well, well, thanks for giving us a tour of the uh, the Aventura and give us more information about the, the kit and what's available. I appreciate uh, you giving us the tour. No problem, Ryan. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm.